assalamu alaikum dear student welcome to the second lecture about the light water reactor today we shall study the pressurized water reactor in the last lecture we studied the boiling water reactor pressurized water reactor are the second kind of the light water reactor pressurized water reactor constitute the large majority of the world's nuclear power plants before starting the details i would like to ask a question can we heat the water up to 588 kelvin in the liquid form yes we can water can be heated up to very high temperature in a high pressure condition rest of the construction of the pressurized water reactor is same as like that of the boiling water reactor the difference lies only here in this part where you can see a pressurizer is installed here and core of the reactor is separated from the circulating water in this part of the pressurized water reactor the water heats up up to 588 kelvin under high pressure conditions which does not boil this hot water then exchanges heat with a lower pressure water system which turns to steam and drives the turbine now we shall discuss the component of the pressurized water reactor one by one So let's start with the fuel element. Like the boiling water reactor, enriched uranium dioxide is used as fuel in pressurized water reactor. Fuel rods are grouped in fuel assemblies called fuel bundles that are then used to build the core of the reactor. A typical pressurized water reactor has fuel assemblies of 200 to 300 rods in each, and a large reactor would have about 150 to 250 such assemblies with 80 to 100 tons of uranium in all usually the refueling in pressurized water reactor is performed after 18 to 24 month cycle the next component is the moderator like that of the boiling water reactor moderator is required in pressurized water reactor pressurized water reactor required the fast neutrons to be slow down Pressurized water reactor requires the fast neutrons to be slowed down in order to interact with the nuclear fuel and sustain the chain reaction. So ordinary water is used as its neutron moderator where the neutrons will collide with the water molecules and lose their energy and the fast neutron will be converted to the slow neutron and those neutron would be capable of producing fission reaction. the water absorbs many neutrons and therefore uranium enrichment becomes necessary to operate these reactors the next important component of the pressurized water reactor is the pressurizer pressure in the primary circuit is maintained by a pressurizer a separate vessel that is connected to the primary circuit and partially filled with water with the help of the pressurizer pressure of 150 atmosphere or greater pressure is applied to heat up the water up to the temperature of several hundred kelvins next component is the coolant light water reactor is used as the primary coolant in pressurized water reactor water enters through the bottom of the reactor's core at about 548 kelvin and heats it as it flows upwards through the reactor core to a temperature of about 588 kelvin the water remains in the liquid form despite the high temperature due to the high pressure of the primary coolant loop usually 150 atmospheric pressure is maintained to heat the water up to the temperature of 588 kelvin shielding is the necessary component as like that of the boiling water reactor in pressurized water reactor shielding must be used to provide the sufficient radiation protection radiation shielding usually consists of barriers of lead concrete or water most commonly concrete is used as the shielding material the function of the shielding is to prevent the leakage of the neutron from the reactor core because these neutrons are dangerous and harmful for the people working around the nuclear reactor Let's discuss the working of the pressurized water reactor. In pressurized water reactor, fuel in the reactor vessel is engaged in a fission chain reaction which produces heat. Heating the water in the primary loop by thermal conduction 
through the fuel cladding, water in the reactor core reaches about 325 degrees centigrade. Hence, it must be kept under about 150 time atmospheric pressure to prevent it from boiling. Pressure is maintained by steam in a pressurizer. In the primary cooling circuit, the water is also used as moderator. But here, if any of the water turns into steam, the fission reaction will be slowed down. So, higher pressure should must be maintained in the pressure chamber to maintain the liquid form of the water. The hot primary coolant is pumped into a heat exchanger called the steam generator where it flows through hundreds or thousands of small turbines. Heat is transferred through the wall of these tubes to the lower pressure secondary. The transfer of heat is accomplished without mixing the two fluids to prevent the secondary coolant from becoming radioactive. In this way, in primary and secondary cycle, the water remains separated. In primary cycle, high temperature is achieved due to the high pressure condition, but water does not physically come out of that chamber. It only transfers heat to the secondary cycle. In a nuclear power station, the pressurizer fed through a steam turbine which drives an electrical generator connected to the electric grid station. After passing through the turbine, secondary coolant is cooled down and condensed in a condenser. The condenser converts the steam to a liquid form so that it can be pumped back to the steam generator and maintain a vacuum at the turbine outlet so that the pressure drop across the turbine and hence the energy extracted from the steam is maximized. If we make a comparison between the pressurized water reactor and boiling water reactor, then we will find the several similarities and differences. Both pressurized water reactor and boiling water reactor use light water or normal water as the coolant and the neutron moderator. Furthermore, they both use and rich uranium as fuel with cylindrical vessel type. The general structure of both reactors are also very similar as they both consist of the main components of the reactor, a containment vessel, a reactor vessel which house the reactor core and a steam generating turbine. There lies some differences. The main difference between the pressurized water reactor and boiling water reactor is in the process of steam generation. In pressurized water reactor, Steam is generated indirectly by using two water circuits, a primary one and a secondary one. On the other hand, a boiling water reactor produces steam directly using a single water circuit. In pressurized water reactor, heat from the reactor core is used to heat the primary reactor coolant as temperature over 300 degrees centigrade. This water is kept liquid under high pressure. The heat from the primary water circuit is then transferred to the secondary circuit by way of the pressurized liquid. The secondary circuit then uses this heat to convert liquid water into steam for the turbine. The steam is later condensed and recycled, whereas in boiling water reactor, steam is directly produced by boiling the water coolant. The steam is separated from the remaining water in steam separator positioned above the core and passed on the turbine. The steam is later condensed. There are two main advantages of the pressurized water reactor. Pressurized water reactors are very stable due to their tendency to produce less power as temperature increase. This makes the reactor easier to operate from a stability point of view. The second advantage is that the pressurized water reactor turbine cycle loop is separate from the primary loop. So the water in the secondary loop is not contaminated by the radioactive materials. Some of the disadvantages are also associated with the pressurized water reactor. In the pressurized water reactor, the coolant water must be highly pressurized to remain liquid at high temperatures. This requires high strength piping, heavy pressure vessel, and 
hence increase the cost of the construction of the pressurized water reactor. The higher pressure can increase the consequences of loss of coolant accident. The second major disadvantage is the reactor pressure vessel is manufactured from the ductile steel. But as the plant is operated, neutron flux from the reactor causes the steel to become less ductile. Eventually, the ductility of the steel will reach limit determined by the applicable boiler pressure vessel and pressure vessel must be repaired and replaced. Additional high pressure components such as reactor coolant pumps, pressurizer, steam generator are also needed for a higher pressure containment. This also increase the cost of the pressurized water reactor power plant. Since uranium-235 is only 0.7% of the natural uranium, so the major disadvantage associated with pressurized water reactor is the enrichment of the uranium which significantly increase the cost of the fuel production. So it's all about the pressurized water reactor. See you in the next lecture. Okay, Allah Hafiz.